Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, any new car, new job, new house, new, new anything that we have, any, any new ch children, any new anything, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the saints that weren't able to make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right, let's go to, uh, what did I say get before? I almost forgot. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 13. 13. It did. Uh, what, what's the last verse of Ezekiel 13? Probably 12, 13, 14? Mm -hmm. I think it's a short chapter. What mm -hmm. I want is a short chapter. Third, 23. Mm -hmm. Ain't that short. What did it say? What, 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 what's in it? What do you... I got to read it. I can't think of it right now. But I know I know it when I hear it. 23 is the last one. Give me 22. Ezekiel yeah, 13. Was, 13 you talking 22. about false prophet. That's probably what I want. Definitely about false prophet. 13, 22. Because with live, you have made the there heart we of the righteous. That's, yeah. that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Goodness gracious. What were we talking about when I wanted to get that? Now, uh, oh, man, I So forgot. we are talking about we are talking about how... People read the Bible, right, and they're in these Christian churches, right, and they really, 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 you know what I'm saying, they study it, take it home, study it, go to their pastor, and they like, they see something scary in that thing. It say, it say, if you do these things, you will not enter into the kingdom. I mean, that's the book. The book say clearly, anybody who does these things will not enter into the kingdom. Pastor, I mean, sometimes. Somebody I mean, tell I somebody try to live righteous. The kingdom and heaven was two different things. Listen, I try to live righteous, but sometimes I slip, Pastor. Does that mean I ain't going to make it into the kingdom? What Pastor going to say? No, 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 no. Brother, you got to understand. God is not sitting here trying to send anybody to hell. Do you believe? You just have to believe that you believe. Trust God. Put it out your mind. It's that another. And they make them feel good about slipping up and sin. Watch this. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter uh, 13, verse 22. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. What they going to say, so let me just ask you. Somebody come in to a, I mean a good Christian church too. I'm talking about that Christian church that accepts everybody, come as you are. I mean a good Christian church. A Christian church that the whole world can be like, you know what, we, 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 we ride with him. Right? I mean a good T.D. Jakes type Christian church. Right, everybody like T.D. You ain't going to find nobody that don't like T.D. Jakes. Only our people. Our people who know who we are, we the only ones that don't like T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes go anywhere. He good. You know, there ain't nobody going to He can probably come in some of these Hebrew congregations. They're going to be like, once they see him, they'll be like, oh, T.D., you know what I'm saying? What's going on, man? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You forget that video I made last week. Don't even worry about it. T.D. Jakes, good. He go wherever he want to go. Right? On oh, any so Martin Luther. <laughs> 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 don't part with your future. So you, we look at that. We talking about a T.D. Jakes type church. You walk into his church with all his good Christian members. And you walk in there and you be like, I don't know about y'all, but we got to be righteous. And I'm talking about like strict. We got to do exactly what God say. If you don't do it, you're going to mess around and go to hell. What's going to happen to you if you're there? What them Christians going to say to you? What they going to call you? You legalistic. They going to call you That's legalistic. Not God. That's not, not a loving God. Your you being too hard. That sound like That's the not devil. the love of God. So you just reading the Bible, but you don't have the love. See, you just a religious person. You not spiritual. You gotta have a personal relationship with them. yada yada yada. All these like different the things. Devil. You sound like the look. All these different things they gonna say. You just discouraging. You being negative. All these different things they gonna say to you. What you doing though? Trying to be righteous, right? Watch what to say. This Ezekiel chapter thirteen. Verse 20, darn two. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. How that's going to make you feel? You come in there and you try to be righteous. And they get to calling you all these names. You legalistic. You ain't, you ain't got no spiritual connection with God. This, that, and the other. You, you falling from grace. All these things they'll say to us. You think that make you happy? Especially if you don't really know. You just in the innocency of your heart. Don't really know the book. You just like, man, 
I read this a little bit, and it made me feel like I really got to do this thing. And they get to shouting at you like that or making you feel a certain way. That thing going to make you sad. You make the heart of the righteous sad. What else do they do? And strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. I mean, Pastor, every now and again, I just slip. Nah, everybody slips. What does that do? What does that do for your slipping? Does it make it weaker or stronger? Stronger. You strengthen the hands of the wicked. You wicked. You ain't got the heart to tell a man, no, nah, that's a sin and you wicked. That weakens wickedness. You call that thing out right in their face. Now, that's wicked. And you're going to die. I mean, that's it. We all going to die. You're going to die in your sin. Book say you're done. That weakens wickedness. You telling them lies. I don't know. See, God, 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 look at your heart. What that mean? What you know about God? Uh, what you know yeah. about my heart? How you know what my heart look like? How you know my heart is acceptable to God? You know my heart? They ain't going to tell you that part. Who knows your heart? Just tell them. You know what I'm saying? Somebody tell you that, just tell them. Okay, what my heart look like? What you think my heart look like? You think my heart good? Oh, man. But then you think you're going to light their butt up. They say, well, yeah, don't nobody know the heart but God. Oh, so, okay. So if God looking at my heart, you don't know what it is. Don't you think I should do make my best precaution to make sure that thing look right to God? How you know I'm good? How you know God going to accept my heart? Give me a guarantee. They ask me that. I can guarantee you that God going to accept your heart if you obey the book. When I'm, what, how God, if God tells you no man know the heart, and he says that these things come from the heart, talking about sins, and you don't do any of them, what does that tell you about your heart? You good. He said from the heart comes treasures of good, treasures of bad. Right? If everything you're doing according to the book, what does that say about your heart? Doctor don't know nothing about your heart either. You come in there with high blood pressure, what did it tell them, though? It ain't bad. I'm wrong. You come in there talking about, oh, I feel this pain in my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, they said, you know what I'm saying? They, how they know you had a heart attack? When was the last time somebody have a heart attack and be like, oh, I'm having a heart attack? Only way you know you're having a heart attack? Because you, you meet the description of somebody who told you that's what it is. Oh, ugh. I think this is a heart attack. You don't know. You didn't look at your heart. You don't know what your heart doing. You have a heart attack. It don't, you don't even really feel it in your heart. A lot of times you just feel it in they show, your shoulder, so they say. Sometimes you do feel the tightening, but it's a, you know, a lot of times you feel it in your shoulder. So what you going to do? How you know it's a heart attack? Because somebody told you it's a heart attack based off of the signs. That's all this book is. Nobody knows the heart. Only thing we look at is what's coming from the heart. What symptoms are you giving off? Are you giving off symptoms that say your heart is good or symptoms that say you sick? When we see that thing sick, you can't be strengthening wickedness. You can't be sitting there talking about, oh, well, no, nah, you, you all right. Just, just trust God. What does that mean to somebody who's sinning? If I'm sinning, how are you going to just tell me just trust God? Obviously, I ain't trusting God. I just got done sinning. Teach me. Show me the word. Open it up with me. Pray for me. Move with me. And don't just pray for me and leave it at that. Pray for me and move with me. Show me what the word is saying. Condemn wickedness in me. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Rebuke me. Don't rebuke, don't rebuke a spirit. Don't rebuke the devil in my life. Rebuke me. I'm the sinner. Rebuke. Tell me. I rebuke you. Stop. Don't do that anymore. That is a sin. If you continue to do that, you will go to hell. Right? That's what the people need. A lot of people ain't going to take that. They're going to they reject it. But let them reject it. They know at least. A lot of people just running around here rejecting God without knowing that they rejecting God. Teach people that they rejecting God. Then let them reject God if they ain't with it. They ain't supposed to be with it. It's only a small, small group. Small, small group. That's all right. We out here fishing. You know what I'm saying? We out here trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? We just keep moving. What else I want you to get? You wanted to get, where, where is that? I think it's Deuteronomy. No, Leviticus 11. I didn't want to get no Leviticus. You wanted to get a Leviticus. We can go there. Yeah, remember when I told her, uh, you know what I'm saying, with the food, it said it's an abomination to you. Oh, I did want to get that. I apologize. No, it was Deuteronomy, though. That's what I want. Oh. Deuteronomy, but I can't think of where it's at. It's Deuteronomy uh, 18, maybe? It ain't 18. No, it ain't 18. No, it ain't 18. <sighs> 16. All right. It ain't 16 either? I don't know. Let's it probably see. ain't 16 either. That <laughs> feel like it should be 16, though. If it ain't 16, I feel like it should be. Most like God looking at me, I don't care nothing about what you feel like it should be, boy. You know what I'm saying? It feel like it should be 16, though. Maybe 16, one. Whatever it is, it don't start off with, it don't start off with the law. It start off 
it started off with something else. It started off with like, started off with like something else. Sixteen starts with the Passover. Mm. Mm. I don't know that it started with the Passover either, though. What verse? Give me verse. Give me verse. Give me verse eleven. Give me verse nine. Seven weeks shall you number unto thee. It's the oh, feast of weeks. Thirteen, maybe. It ain't thirteen. Mm. Yeah, you gotta go get thirteen. I already know it ain't thirteen. Ah. Okay, hold on now. It is thirteen. We gonna do? It's fourteen, I think. Fourteen. What verse one, sir? Is well. Let me see. You shall not cut yourselves on the baldness between your I eyes. Say that is it. Yeah, it's fourteen. It's I say fourteen. That is it. So it should have started what? Verse three, verse five? Three. Three? Yeah. So it's Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, verse three. What we trying to talk about, we wanna we kinda wanna look at the law. We was having a little discussion before the camera came on about um about uh the diet, you know what I'm saying, what what what, what we've been accustomed to call the dietary law. We gotta correct that even in ourselves, right? Because it ain't no dietary. When we got when we when we were given the law, we were given a law. That's it. It wasn't a dietary law and a and mosaic a, um, law, a uh, moral law, and a mosaic. All this Levitical. other stuff. All this stuff is us breaking up God's work. Right? We say, okay, well, this is just the dietary. Ain't no dietary. Ain't no ain't no feast law. It ain't no all these different laws that they got us like splitting stuff up with. We got one law. All of it go together. You take the whole thing or you leave the whole thing. Ain't no way to split that thing up. Whole law, one law. Right? So let's listen to our law. This is what the book say. We want to we want to kind of look at the portion that discusses and teaches us how we should eat, what's good for our bodies, right? We want to kind of discuss that. We want to look at it. and We want to try to understand what was God saying to us, and that's why we're going here. Let's go. This Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, verse three. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Uh huh. These are the beasts which you shall eat. Uh huh. The ox, the sheep, and the goat. That's a good thing. To <laughs> the heart and the roebuck. That's talking about. Keep going. And the fallow deer. Okay, that's, the, talk, that's talking about that's talking about deers, right? We're talking about the heart and the roebuck. That's talking about like deer related. You know what I'm saying? Things with the antlers running the through the fast. Gazelle. You know what I'm saying? You gotta shoot them. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. And the wild goat, and the mm -hmm. pygarg, and the wild ox, and the camois, mm -hmm. and every beast that parts the hoof and cleaves the cleft into two claws and chews the cud amongst the beasts. That ye shall eat. All right, so he gives us specifics about the types of animals. Just in case, you know what I'm saying, he names specific animals. Then just in case we get to running far off and get into another land, them animals are way different, he just let them know, well, look for them hoofs. You know what I'm saying, what that hoof look like? If it look like that, you don't know. I know you ain't never seen nothing like that in your life. But if that hoof look right, chop that thing up and eat it. You know what I'm saying? that hoof look right and eat the cut, chew the cut. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just look, look for what you're looking for and get it. You a know what pig, I'm although it has the parted hoof, does not chew the cut. Ain't that what it say? It might only say that in Leviticus, though. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and keep reading. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud so or said, of them that divide the cloven hoof. He said, this is what you don't eat. You stay away from this stuff. A Let's rabbit. Well, the rabbit chew the cud, don't it? It'll tell you. But it don't part the hoof. Yeah. All right. uh, as the camel and the hare and the coney, for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. All right, that's talking about rabbits and bunnies and all that and stuff. And camels. All right, keep going. And the swine, because it divides the hoof, yet choose not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Right. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Okay, keep going. These ye shall it's eat a, of, He said it's unclean? Unclean to you. Unclean? Is that unclean unto you? Why you, why you put that unto you on there? I don't got nothing to do with the most high. Okay, keep going. These ye shall eat of these ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever has not fins and scales, ye may not eat. Mm -hmm. It is unclean unto you. Unto who? Unto you. So it's unclean. Or is it just unclean unto you? It's unclean unto you. Okay. Let's contrast that, right? So we see or right, let, let's keep going. I want to say I want to hear abomination. You know, that's what our people love. We love to hear that abomination. That's an abomination. Pig. That's an abomination. And it is. It's an abomination to us for sure. Don't think I'm teaching nothing different. That's book. Keep going. Of all clean birds ye shall eat, but these are they of which ye shall not eat. Uh -huh. The eagle, the, os the os os osifrich, and the osprey, mm -hmm. and the gleed, and the kite, and the vulture after his kind. 
and every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckow, cuckow. You know, the all hawk, black people, we get nervous, start reading some of these birds. And the hawk after his looking, kind. We looking. Is he gonna say? Chicken? Is he gonna say chicken? <laughs> Is he gonna say chicken? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Keep going. The little owl and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle and the cor- cormorant and the stork and the heron after her kind and the la- and the lapwig and the bat and every creeping thing that flies is unclean unto you. They he shall made not it, be. Y'all. He didn't say chicken. You know what I'm saying? So he said we good. You know what I'm saying? As long as there ain't none of them animals. He said, don't eat them. But he said, they unclean unto who? Unto you. Okay. But of all clean fowls you may eat, you shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. You shall give it unto the stranger that it, you shall, thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in your gates that he may eat it. So, or you may sell it unto an alien, for you are a holy people unto the Lord your God. Now, think about what he just said. The whole time he's telling us what's unclean to us. But you can give it away to anybody else. They're not in your people. These were designed to govern our people only, right? The whole law. The whole law was designed That's to govern That's why Paul was telling people. the Gentiles, don't worry about nothing but, you know what I'm saying, don't, don't mess with fornication and sacrificing the idols. You know what I'm saying? Because God just said you can give it to them to eat, but it's not for us to eat. All right. That said, that shows you the difference of level of severity of what God is looking for. Us, you do it, you unclean. Another thing you'll notice, you've ne- you're never going to read anywhere in the law where it say, if you eat something unclean, what happens to you? Right? There's no judgment attached to it in the book. Right? There's no, if you eat pig, you will be cut off from the people. Right? There's no, if you eat pig, you will be stoned. All right? there's, no, there's never any judgment attached to uh, uh, our eating habits. Right? Not saying that that there was not anything that the judges could do about it because it's in the judge's hands. They go to a judge and you catch somebody eating it. The judge can decide whatever he want. Most high God gave him that. So you sure they didn't have to sit outside the camp when God was among them in the wilderness? Not for, not for, it, it doesn't say that specifically for eating. It says, it says for unclean, you do have to sit out the, 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 the camp. But it always tells you if you do this, you're unclean for this long, sit out the camp until, until this the morning, long, whatever. Right. But for eating, it never gives you that judgment according to eating. Right? It just tells you you're unclean. That's it. It doesn't tell you if there's a time period. It doesn't tell you if you can, if you can become clean again, if there's a way around it. Is that a permanent unclean or is that just unclean where I can tell you? It doesn't tell us. Even the Messiah now, again, said, you know, uh-huh. you eat, even the Messiah said you eat it and it perishes. And know? it goes. Yeah. And so the Messiah told us anything that, that you mouth. eat, you purge it out. Right? So even if it is unclean, you purge it out. And so that's why he was able to make that statement as a judge. Right? He's able to make that statement because he's... The book doesn't it doesn't design it to, to to say one word, and God did that on purpose. He's given us something. He's trying to let us know something. We speak. right. So then, if you look at the end of it, He tells you, Gentiles can do this. They're not your people. They can do this, right? Give it to them. Sell it to them. Give it away to the stranger. Sell it to an alien, right? That God has no problem with that. How is that different to some of the other sins, though? When we came into Israel, right? Before it was Israel, it was Canaan. There were people there. Why did God say that he was kicking them out of the land? Because of their iniquity. What do I want? Leviticus 11? That's the talking about all the food that we can eat. Leviticus 18? 18. What is it? What are you looking for? What did it say? I'm talking about fornication. Uh, sexual laws. That you know what I'm would be. Uh, it sounds like 18. I think so. 18? Mm-hmm. Let me get Leviticus 18. I'm about to show you all the difference. So we just read it. It's talking about uh, unclean to you and yeah. abomination to you. And no, nah, don't worry about that. You sell that thing to the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Go give it to an alien or something. Right? So he told her that thing cool for them. God ain't got no problem with them doing that. Right? It's a sin for us. For some reason, God ain't got to, hey, hey get, the, get your butt away from that. Go to your mama. For some reason, God ain't got no problem for the Gentiles, though. You know what I'm saying? Maybe God don't love the Gentiles. Maybe he don't care about the Gentiles. Maybe he don't care if they go to hell. I doubt it. Let's look at the difference. This is Leviticus chapter 18. Give me verse, mm, start me off like somewhere in the middle. What's, give me mm, 20. What 20 say? Moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. All right, so all this that we just skipped over, he's telling us all the sexual sins that we can't do, right? Then he's telling us we can't lie carnally with our uh, neighbor's wife. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep going. 
And you shall not let any of your seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shall you profane the name of your God, I am Yahuwah. Look, you can't profane the name of your God, I am Yahuwah. And you can't let your seed pass through the fire. Keep going. What should you say next? You shall not lie with, a, with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. All right? Can't be a homosexual. Keep going. Neither shall you lie with any beast to defile yourself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand, stand before a beast to lie down there unto. It is confusion. All right? You talking about a woman standing in front of you. You talking about just sitting there and letting the animal just mess with you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Do all the stuff that, you know what I'm saying, you all not do. Don't stand in front of no dog and let it mess with you because it feel good to you. All right? He said, no. He said, no, you can't do that. He said, a man can't lie down with it. All right? Keep going. Defile not you yourselves in any of these things. He said, do, do not defile yourselves in any of these things. Why? For in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So uh, a whole, all the nations got kicked out because they did all this stuff. Meanwhile, when it comes to food, he tells them, no, nah, give it to the nation. They're good. Right? So it's one thing he, he's encouraging you. Give this to the nation. It's all right. They can have it. On the other hand, he said, this nation, they did all this stuff, and I'm punishing them for that. He's not punishing them. You'll never see anywhere in the book where he punished Gentiles for eating random food. Never happened. It just never happened. I can tell you what he did punish them for. He punished them for having sex. He punished them for making sacrifices to other gods. He punished them for um, uh, blaspheming his name. A whole lot of stuff he punished them for. He never punished them because they ate some pork. Never punished them for crawfish. Right? Never punished them for eating the wrong type of bird. Because you know they was eating it and enjoying it. Right? And he still look at them and say, oh, well, you know, you can convert and come with us. You just got to keep our laws. How many Canaanites did he say can come in here and keep our laws? No. Because they did these things. There's no way they can come keep our laws. When we, when we wanted to find, I mean, let's say somebody was able to keep our law. Where are we going to have to get them from? Far away. Books say, you go far away. He said, if there's anybody near here, you don't give them no peace terms. You go to war. You kill them. He said, if, if it's a nation far away, you offer them peace first. And if they accept the peace, you take them as captives. And they can be a part of, part of our people. All right? If they don't accept the peace, then get their butt. Kill the men. Lead the women. All right? You take the women on. And you got to take care of the women. Same thing with the Messiah. He offered peace. And whoever don't accept that peace... It's war when you get back. It's going down. Right? So we look at these things, and it's important. It's, it's important that we understand a lot of, a lot of these people that, that call themselves teachers of the law do not know the law. Right? They look, at, they, look at, they look at the information that they get. They've gotten. It's just like Christians. Same exact thing as Christians. You have Christians that have been taught to view the Bible one day, uh, one way. You have Hebrew Israelites been taught to view the law one way. And so they view it, but they don't know the intricacies of the law. They don't know how that thing break down. They don't know how it really operate. If somebody set them up and told him, told them, explain. If somebody put up a movie scene, say, I'll give you any actor you want, any, any, just make, make what we read in the law real. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of make it look real. They wouldn't be able to do it, right? They'd be able to tell, oh, no, nobody's going to be eating pork. That's the only scene they're going to be able to set up. They wouldn't be able to tell you just front to back. You get us the guy, I guarantee we'd be able to set that whole movie scene up. We said the whole, we'll give you a whole movie scene of just a random couple living in the days of the Bible under the law. And that thing would be accurate according to the book. Because we got the law and we understand it. We know the law. We studied it. We didn't been through it many times. We love that thing. You know what I'm saying? We love that thing. That thing law. The, the Hebrews, they get thrown for a loop. Because we'd say, we'd tell a Gentile right in front of them. Nah, you ain't got to keep the law. We'd tell a Hebrew. No, you ain't got to keep the law. That thing be, what did you just say? <laughs> and we don't, they don't understand. We know it better than you know it. We break this thing down. We love it. We ain't going to tell you that you're going to go to hell for not keeping it, though. That ain't book. That's crazy. That's speaking against the law. They don't even understand it. All right? That's what we try to do. We just try to make sure that it's clear. You just got to have stuff clear. And it's small little thing. Uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 28. Let's it, go ahead and get started. It trips them out that we, we keep the law and. That thing, they don't know what to do. <laughs> you a Christian. I keep the law, bro. Yeah, like Christians think. You be eating pork, man. I ain't, I ain't had no pork since 2000. Probably know, 12, three, 13, about, maybe. About three years ago. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't know what you're talking about. He was you know what I'm saying? So, so you don't eat pork. That thing confuses. Right? Because they've never had, they, they don't have, they have people that put it against, you know, New Testament versus Old Testament. 
Christians say Old Testament done away with. We like the New Testament. Hebrews say Old Testament more important than the New Testament, or at least presented that way, right? And so you had these things, they oppose each other. Oh, not us. Whole thing talking the same thing. Got to have them both. How you going to have some old without the new? That ain't even book. Can't do it. It's Isaiah chapter 28. I'm going to show you all why, why, why it's important to look at the little details. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All right, so he asked questions there. Who is he going to teach knowledge? And who is he going to make to understand the teaching, the doctrine, right? Who's going to make the, uh, make to understand the teaching? And then he asked another question. Is it going to be those who are just weaned from the breast and drawn from the, or weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, right? So he's talking about a toddler, a baby, right? He said, is it going to be a baby who I make to understand the doctrine and, and uh, give the knowledge to, right? What do we think? Of course not, right? It's not going to be a baby. What is the baby going to be? Watch what he say next. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little, right? What's a precept? Commandment. That's a commandment. So when he says precept upon precept, he's saying commandment on a commandment. Then he's saying line upon line. And you got to take a little bit from there and a little bit from there. What does that sound like for us? No puzzle. Like a puzzle, right? So you take it back to what he asked you before. He said, who is he going to teach knowledge to? Is it going to be a baby? Because this thing is a puzzle, is what he's trying to tell you. So if you have a baby, and let's just say we put like a thousand piece puzzle right in front of him. What is my boy going to do with that puzzle? He's going to get to taking the piece, putting it in his mouth. He's going to be slamming it, putting pieces together that don't go together. He's going to make a mess. But to him, that's not a problem. For him, he's going to be looking like, oh, look at God. I just got this big mess. Oh, this puzzle piece take good. Look at God. God is just so good to me. God, is just, it's just a blessing to wake up in the morning. That's how he's looking at it. Because in this innocency, he don't know what he's doing. He's just making a darn mess. God is saying, I'm not giving him the knowledge. He's too young. Precept has to be upon precept, line upon line. You got to take a little bit from here and a little bit to there, and you have to know how to put it together. That's what Paul is talking about when he says it has to be rightly divided. You have to be able to take from different places and put it all together, all put everything in its proper place when it comes to the book. So he said, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. It's very important that we take God serious at what he's saying. He's saying, after he gets done telling you it's a, it's a puzzle, he come back and he say, because with stammering lips and another tongue, I'm going to speak to these people. What's stammering lips? Like a stutter, right? You stammer, it's like, a, you know, it's a stutter, right? So he said, I'm going to speak to the people with a stutter, and I'm going to speak to these people with another tongue, which is a different language. So I'm speaking to the people with a different tongue, another language, and with a stutter problem, a speech impediment. What happens when people speak to you in a different language? Do you know exactly what they're talking about? No, you don't know what they're saying, right? Uh, he needs to get us all this, uh, uh uh, you want to directions, I'm not sure, can you write it, draw it for me, because I just don't get what you're saying. I'm trying to understand what you're saying, I just don't get it, right? Somebody come to you with, I, 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 I just want to, whoa, slow down, bro, Let, hold on, say it again, say it more clear for me, I just want to, I, I don't really get what you're saying. God is, God is telling us, he said, he going to have the devil speak to us, how he going to have the devil speak to us? He ain't saying nothing about the devil. Oh, devil ain't in this? Who going to speak to us like that? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. That's it. Most High God saying he is going to speak to us that way. So God is choosing to speak to us in a way that we will not understand. That's important. We have to understand. We have to, it's, it's important for us to, to realize what we're going towards, right? This is, not, this is not like some, oh, Christians are how you believe. God is doing everything. He's knocking down walls just to make sure you understand the Bible. No, that's not what he's doing. He's putting it to you in a way you're not going to get it, a way you're going to struggle. It's a puzzle. you got to try to put it together. you got to try to figure it out. All these different obstacles in front of you in terms of getting to him, right? And he tells you, clear out, for with a stammering lip and another tongue, I'm going to speak to the people to whom I said. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And? And this is the refreshing. But? Yet they would not hear. 
He said, I gave them this. I spoke to them in a way they didn't understand. I said these things to them, but they wouldn't what? They would not hear. They wouldn't listen. So what happened to them as a result of them not listening? But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. So because I spoke to them in a way they didn't understand, the word is still a puzzle to them. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For what reason, God? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. That is the most important piece. He's setting it up for us as a puzzle that as long as you're a baby in the word, right, and just drawn from the milk, drawn from the breast, you will not understand the word because it's a puzzle to you and you're not skilled enough to put those puzzle pieces together. Right. And then you get to a place where he's letting you know I'm speaking to you purposely in a way that you will not get it, that you will not understand. And if you just like eh, I give up, I don't listen, I'm not going to listen. You walk away from it before you come into age and continue to study and try to figure out that puzzle. Then he says this is a trap. Read that last part again for me for the reason that they'll be what? That they might go and fall back. That you might go. You fall backwards. First the thing, you're not listening. Where That means you're going. You turned, right? So that you might go. Then the next thing you're going to do is fall backwards. They're going to be what? Broken? And be broken, snared, and taken. What's a snare? Trap. The whole thing is a trap. The whole book is a trap. So that's why you see little things like that where it's like, this is unclean unto you. But go sell it to the, go sell it to the, to the Gentile. Most I got, he could have very clearly made, he could, most I got could have written this book way more clear. Easily. Listen, look, if you eat this, this is not good for your body. I want my son to come out of this people, so I need you guys to eat like this. Nah, not really a big deal after he gets here, but this is what I want you to do, right? And then, son gets here, nah, I want you to just be, just understand what he's saying, right? All this stuff, at that point, it's great for you. It's, you can continue to do it, but I'm not going to judge you based off of that. I'm going to judge you based off of what he says. I, he could have easily just wrote that. He could have wrote it in a language today where even people, you know what I'm saying, back then, he could have wrote it in seven different languages that didn't even exist yet, and then people would have been like, look, oh my gosh, look, we didn't even create this language yet, and it was already written here, right? You know how much glory that would have got him? Most of God like, eh, nah, nah. If I do that, everybody going to think they in, right? He set it up to where I want the people that are dedicated. It's a trap. This is going to weed out everybody who's not dedicated, everybody who won't die for me, right? Everybody else, this will weed them out. That's what he has down. He made it a puzzle. He made it where there's challenges to it because it's going to trap anybody who doesn't belong there, right? That's what it's all about. Trapping the ones who don't belong there. That's why he lets the wheat grow with the tear. Because eventually, the tear going to show themselves to be tear. The wheat going to show themselves to be wheat. And then he going in and he going to collect only the wheat. Right? It's all about separating the real from the fake with God. That's what's important. All the little details in the book, you have to get them. You have to be able to look into them. You have to be able to understand them. Otherwise, it's going to be one little thing. You go off and you're going to start running. And your butt going to run into a wall. And you're going to go. You're going to be fall back, be broken, snared, and taken, right? It's all going to be a trap. And that's what's happened to a lot of our Hebrew brothers. Hey, let them kids up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen to a lot of our Hebrew brothers. It's going to happen. It's happened to a lot of these Christians already. So it's important for us to be able to look into it. Come get this other one too, please. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, Oh no. Did he just crawl in here? Huh? He just crawled in here? No, nah, he's asleep. Uh oh. Thank you. I appreciate you. Let me take him to his mama. Thank you. Let's uh let's go ahead and uh uh where did we leave off last week? And James, we left off from Chronicles, Genesis twenty two. He was talking about faith and works and That's how it, counted. it was accounted to Abraham as righteous. That's right. So we got uh so we left off talking about Isaac, right? And we looked at Isaac and we tried to we tried to go back yeah, because and show how Isaac was Yahushua, yeah. right? How Isaac represented Yahushua. You see, and we talked about how Abraham was glad to see Yahushua's day. You remember Yahushua was like, Abraham, he he saw my day and he was glad. He rejoiced and he was glad. And so he's looking like, what is Yahushua talking about when he said that? 
Then we looked at how Abraham made a feast for Isaac when he was weaned. And I told y'all, like, that's when, that was Yahushua's day. That was the, that's the day that he was talking about, right? And we looked at the life of Isaac, and we saw how it represented Yahushua to him being the sacrifice of Abraham, and Abraham still in his hand, to, um, to uh, a lot of the other things that we look at in his life. So now we're going to continue on, and we're going to try to progress through Genesis, and we're going to look at um, some kids that Abraham, I'm sorry, that Isaac had, Abraham's grandchildren, right? Um, and kind of look at the differences. So we're going to see that it's a, Romans actually tells us, it's, it's somewhere else, but I remember where it is in Romans. It's Romans uh, 9. Might be, uh, I remember Romans for sure. Though. This is Romans 9, give me verse 1. I say the truth in the Messiah, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh -huh. For I could wish that myself were accursed from the Messiah for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, uh -huh. who are Israelites to God, whom boy. pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants of the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, the Messiah came who was over all? God bless forever. Amen. Uh huh. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Right. So he's making it clear to us. He said it's not like the word of God didn't take effect when he when he made promises to our people. Because everybody who say they are people are not our people. And we talked about that a little bit last week. We talked about how Ishmael came from Abraham. He didn't stay with Abraham, though. Most high God got him up out of there at the word of uh, Abraham's wife. All right, he told, he told Abraham, you better listen to everything Sarah I told you. Everything Sarah told you. All right, keep going. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall your seed be called. Mm -hmm. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Uh -huh. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Uh huh. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither So this is talking done. about Isaac's children, right? So he said when Rebekah, Isaac got, a, got him a woman, right? And he said when Rebekah, she conceived, even by Isaac, what happened? Having, uh, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the person of a purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of uh -huh. works, but of him that calls. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Right? So he told us, he telling us just based off of them being born, the Most High God made a choice about these kids. He said, the elder shall serve the younger. And what else? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And then he quoted the book and he said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. These are the two children of Isaac, all right? So they was born, and they were twins. Oh, I didn't want to read it, but let's go ahead and get it. It's Genesis, uh, this Genesis 25. Give me, I don't know really. Give me verse 14, maybe. Hadar and Tima and Jeter and Nafish and Kitama. Uh, give me verse uh, uh, 19. 19, what I want? Yeah. It's Genesis chapter uh, 25, verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the right. sister of Laban, the Syrian. This is what Romans was just telling us, all right? So keep going. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because he, she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she uh -huh. went to inquire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in your womb. Look, the, look what the Lord said to her. Yah said to her, 
two nations are in your womb, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about Jacob and Esau. He said, two nations are in your womb. What else? And two manner of people shall be separated from your bowels. And two types of people shall be separated from your bowels. All right? Keep going. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right? And so this is what Romans was just talking about. He was like, man, before they even born, Most High God already made a choice. Right? That's why Paul was trying to make the point. He was using this to make the point that the election is what it's about. It's about uh, the election of God. It's about who God calls. Right? And that goes back to our heart. How do we know who God calls? How can I look at you and be like, God called you, brother? You don't know who God calls. The only way we can know and get a hit is by what we do. If you act in a way that the Most High, that lives up to the calling of the Most High God, then I can say, you've been called. If you don't, then you haven't been called, right? It's, all, it's not finite for us. It's not, it's not something where this is it, that's in, right? For us, it's all fluid. We saying, look, today, you look like somebody who called. Tomorrow, you might not, though. Our goal is to live it out until we die. If we live it out until we die, then that's proof. We live it out until next week, then that's just you making a fool out of yourself. That's just wasted time. You could have just spent these two weeks sinning. Don't sin one week and then be righteous the next week. It don't make no darn sense. You're wasting time. You ain't even getting your money's worth. All right? So we look at it, and he's trying to make it clear that people can be called to righteousness. People can be called to damnation. Right? And he's, he's using this as a story. I was talking to somebody on Facebook, and I was, I was quoting. I was like, uh, I, was trying to, I was trying to explain to him that... Uh, that the two marriages, you know what I'm saying, having, having two wives ain't right. You know what I'm saying, that you can't do it. So what I did is I quoted, what did I quote? I quoted something that was, oh, I, I, quoted, uh, I quoted Paul when he said every man should have his own wife, every woman should have her, her own husband. I was like, so there you go. But before I got to that, I ain't even talk, I ain't even talk, you can't, you can't talk New Testament to these people. So I lit his butt up with the law and with the prophets first. And then at the very end, I brought that in. I was just like, you know what I'm saying? He, he kept on denying some of the stuff that I was like, and it's clear even from Paul. He says it. Says that. He got off. He'd been saying like one sentence. Okay, but show me this though. Okay, but show me this. As soon as I mentioned Paul, he wrote this long paragraph. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all always go to Paul. Paul don't supersede the law. This, that, and the other. And it's out of context. You can tell that's the one that usually people, he was he had prepared for that one. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't prepared for none of the other stuff I gave him. He's like, oh, well, show me something else. You know what I'm saying? Show me something else. But as soon as I should give him that one, he had prepared for that one. He was like, ah, let me go and copy paste my notes of what I said to this other Christian last week. You know what I'm saying? Hit me with that. So I'm like, bro, all, everything that you just said don't even apply. I just got done talking to you about the law and the prophets. I ain't mentioned nothing about no New Testament until now. So I don't know why you're trying to say that I'm focused on New Testament. But whatever. One of the things that he said, though, is that it was out of context. Right? He was like, Paul was talking about... Um, fornication and this, that, and the other. He wasn't talking about adultery or nothing like that. I was like, okay, good. I was like, all right. So when Yahushua was trying to make a point about the Sabbath and he, taught, he taught, told the story about David and told you what the book said about David, was that in context or out of context? No answer, right? That's the book, though. You have to be able, if you're, if you're well-versed in the book, you're going to have stuff that's out of context, right? This is out of context. Right? What Paul just did, it's out of context. Paul, to, to prove to you that it's about election, it's about being called by God, he went to twins being born and one being chosen over the other. The context is twin. When we read this, it ain't talking. We ain't, we, if you read this, you do not get election out of that. You ain't talking about no election. All you get is this is a prophecy about one son versus the next son. Right? But he uses that to prove a separate point that's out of context. It's important that Anybody who knows how to deal with the word will be able to do it. Now, that opens a lot of room for fraudsters who will take stuff out of context all the time, but they're going to take stuff out of context in the context, right? It's, they talk, the book telling you, thou shalt do this, and they'll be like, no, I ain't talking about that, right? So that, we know that's just a lie. But to use something in the Bible as an example to show a, a larger point, that's what we do as Bible teachers. That's what you have to do. There's no other way to do it, okay? So you look at this, and then we see that... Um, one son is chosen above the other from the Most High God in terms of the prophecy. But watch what happens next. Two nations in there. Two manners of people. And when her days 
to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh oh. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they the called the first his name one came Esau. out what? Red. He came out what color? Red. And it was all over like a what? Hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. He was red all over, and he was like a hairy garment. You know what that means? He was the white man. He had to be the white man. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It, the, what we just read told us very clearly. Hold on. Let me see. I don't think y'all understand. <laughs> this, what we looking at, this color on the board, that's white. But this is whiter. If I color this, like it's a white board, that's what they call it. But if I color the whole thing red, now it's really white. The man just told us that it was a man who came out hairy all over and red. That don't tell us that he's a white man. It tells us that he got red hair. Then they try to say white people turn red. You know what I'm saying? In the sun, right? In the heat. In the, it was like, yeah, that's a sunburn, bro. The baby didn't come out with no sunburn. <laughs> he said he was hairy all over like a hairy garment, right? <laughs> but we've been conditioned to say this is a white man. A couple reasons. A couple things that we can we, we look at, right? He tells us that two nations will come from us and two manner of people. So that gives us justification at that point to say this describes where the white man came from. Why would we choose Esau, though? Why would Esau, why would we need Esau to be the white man? From a Hebrew state of mind. Mm -hmm. With slavery. God just told us he hates Esau. We need, I mean, uh, anybody who put us in slavery got to be the most vile people in the world, right? Who is the most vile person in the Bible? Who's somebody that God just said, I hate you? That's the white man. <laughs> right? So that's, how, that's, that's the logic that we use to come up with this doctrine, right? We backed into it. We just looking like, who the worst person that you could possibly be? I don't like you, but you're mean. You've done some wicked things to my people, which is true. Don't get me wrong. Some wicked stuff to our people. They looking like, well, who the worst character we can find in the book? I just need somebody that God hates. Nah, that's him. Right? That's the white. So we look at it, then we read this verse again with that presupposition. Red, he's a redneck. Then the man just told you he's hairy all over. His hair is red, is what it's telling you, right? But that man's a redneck. So now they go into it, right? And now that's the argument, that's the discussion that we end up wasting all our time talking about. Esau is the white man. No, Esau's not the white man. Esau's the white man. No, Esau's not the white man. We care all this time about Esau being the darn white man. And we know he's not the white man. Right? Huh? That's right. They come from Jephthah. Yep, absolutely. That's right. Grab a... Uh, grab a yeah, but never in life did a black couple produce twins and one was a white guy. <laughs> uh, albino still look like they're black. Oh, they probably got, they probably got cheated on then, huh? That's what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They never, like, a black couple have never produced a white person. Like, period. You know what I'm saying? You can get an albino, but their hair still like ours, and their facial features still like ours. Everything is still like ours, just, just not the skin tone. You know what I'm saying? No blonde hair, blue eye kid ever came out of a black couple. <laughs> it's just, that's just never happened. It's Genesis 19. All right, because he told us, we look at it, we need to, it's important. What we try to do is we want to, we want to, we don't want to just, we don't just want to stand up here and tell everybody they're stupid, right? We don't want to just, you know what I'm saying, all oh, these Hebrews are crazy. We don't tell them they're stupid now. Don't get me wrong. We don't tell them they're stupid. We don't tell them they're crazy. But before we get too deep into doing that, we need to understand why. We need to understand how did you get to where they, like, we, we, can't, we can't be the ones who stand on this side of things and because we think we got a little bit of truth, point at everybody else and just ignore everything they're saying. That can't be us. Right? That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a quick path to just setting yourself up and being puffed up with knowledge. Right? We need to be able to understand the arguments of everybody as much as, you know, as much as the most high God permits and time permits because you waste too much time on these people there. Yeah, you're going wild. But as long as it, it permits, <laughs> you need to understand their argument. Why do you think this is the white man? What do you use to prove that this is the white man? Well, They're going to go, he said two nations, and he said two manner of people. And so also, now we want to talk about it. We want to understand 
has there has that ever happened? Have nations come from one person? And also how they how God was talking about they was in our land and they took our land. You know what I'm saying? But they they t- they they take that prophecy and think that they that God's talking about the fake Jews today. But I don't think they realize that Arabs had it before them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Arabs had it before them and then even before all of that. They, the Bible says that in the Bible they said that they got the land. Like Esau was in our land when Babylon got us, right? Esau, Esau was running our land at that point, right? And that's that's what the prophecy is talking about. It's talking about Esau taking. Esau was happy about us being taken away. That's what it's, that's what it's all talking about. But you know, if you don't know it, it's it's you know you just you just trying to find some reason to to justify your hate of the white man because you're really upset with the white people, and so. The Christians, they what? How you see Christians, right? Christians, we see them as cozying up to white people. They don't want no problem with white people. They selling out to white people. So when you learn, I'm a Hebrew, and they've been telling me all my life these white people are Jew, and they not. Y'all got it all wrong. So everything you do, you want to make it the opposite. I ain't cozying up to a white man. I hate the white man, and it's right for me to hate him because now you got to justify it, right? You know you ain't supposed to be hating nobody. So he's like. I got to justify it's okay to hate the white man. God hated Esau. What if the white man is Esau? I hate Esau. God hated Esau. It's okay to hate Esau because God hate Esau. White man is Esau. He red. He a redneck. Esau red. I told y'all. That's white man. White man Esau. And then you teach that doctrine. Now you justify it and what you already wanted to feel. Right? It's all flesh, though. All of it is flesh. And you're just trying to use Bible to justify flesh. Right? This is Genesis 19. We're going to look at nations. We're going to look at some examples of when nations came from a particular people. Most, one person produced multiple nations. All right? Genesis 19, give me verse uh, 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and behold, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and, set, and sent Lot out in the, midst of, in the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities of the, of the which Lot dwelt. So who is Lot? In the which Lot dwelt. Lot is, Lot is uh, Abraham's nephew. All right? So Lot is the same people as Abraham. But watch this. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. Uh huh. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Mm-hmm. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Uh huh. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Mm-hmm. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with their father. And she perce- and she perceived not, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Uh huh. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Mm-hmm. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Watch this. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. Called his name what? Moab. And what happened? The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. That's a nation. And the younger she also bare a son and called his name ben Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. That's another nation. That's two nations that came from one guy. They ended up being complete nations. Matter of fact, Israel, Israel right here, Moab and Ammon were to the, uh, to the east of us, right? Other nations, two separate nations, all came from the same people. Israel, uh, uh, Moab, Esau, uh, Ammon, and who else? Uh, Is that it? Midian. Midian, uh, Assyria maybe? No, I don't think Assyria. Um, well, they're serious, not, well, Shem, but not Syria, Abraham. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But, um, but Abraham, right? all these Midian, all that came from Abraham, right? Uh, um, uh, Ishmael, uh, Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? Ishmaelites, all those came from one guy, but all these are different nations, right? So when the books say two men or people are going to come from them, 
two, two nations will come from them. That doesn't have to mean black and white, right? There's nothing to suggest that it's black. There's no reason for us to think because it just gave us two nations that came from Lot, that one is white and one is black. Nobody would make that assumption. The only reason we make that assumption here is because we want to believe that Esau is white to justify something for us, right? Let's keep going. Let's jump down to, uh, uh, I would say Genesis 14, but we ain't got to get it. Genesis 14 to prove to us that Abraham is a Hebrew. We call it, that's, that's where Abraham was called a Hebrew. But let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm teaching right now. You got to go over there. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. It's 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. Right, I'm about to show y'all something. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? And he said there, and he said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keeps the sheep. I wonder who he's talking about, this youngest that keeps sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Mm -hmm. And he sent and brought him in. Uh -huh. Now he was ruddy. He was what? Ruddy. Y'all know what this word is? Ruddy? It means red. You know, do you know if we looked up the Hebrew works, so the Bible that we got is, is all, it was originally written in Hebrew, right? The Old Testament, at least. Originally written in Hebrew. So what they have done is they've taken Hebrew letters and then they've translated, you know, something like, oh, my mind is bad. You translate something like that into something like this, right? So you would look, sorry, you can't see it, but you would look at a Hebrew word and then you'll translate it into an English word. Now, just like Spanish, a word could technically, depending on the context, one word you could translate in a different, with a different word. So you, you got this Spanish word, what's an example of a Spanish word that could be said? You have, um, how do you say, so por favor. Right, that you said? Por favor. Por favor. All right, so um, when you're dealing with Hebrew words, you know what I'm saying, you have one Hebrew word, and it can be, it can be translated into a different English word. So in this case, you have red and ruddy. Same Hebrew word, red and ruddy. All right? So like the brother was saying, you have this word, and we say Esau is white because this word, that this Hebrew word was applied to him that means red, right? So therefore, he's white. Then we come and read chapter 16. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. What verse was we on? 11. Verse 11. Watch this. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? Jump on down. Jump, okay. jump back to where we were. What was that, 12, 13? And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and this withal what, what of a beautiful that? countenance. 12. All right. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 12. 16, verse 12. 16, verse 12. Sorry about that. And 1 he, Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance. And he was what now? Ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance. So now if we take this, this is the same Hebrew word that was talking about Esau. If we take this, now we have to say that David was white. Right? If we just take it, I mean, there's no way to other do it. There's no other way to do it. We have to say that David was white. Right? But this is what they use to try to prove. No, nah, he's red and he came out. That means he's the white man. Okay, so what does it mean for David? Right? In reality, all it means is David was light-skinned. Light-skinned brother. You know what I'm saying? He was brown-skinned. He had a lighter brown skin. All right? The hair that, that Esau had on was a lighter brown color. The word, the word red is like Adam, right? The same word was used for what? Adam. Adam. Yeah. Right? The same word, the same word or the root word rather, was used to describe, guess what? Dirt. When you see some white dirt. And, when was the last uh, time you just walk and see some white dirt? You see a ruddy horse, it's like a, like a brown. The same yeah. word was used for the red heifer. In the book. 
Now, when you look at a cow, right? Let's just say you, you see you see a cow. Sometimes you have them like them brown cows, but they like a nice, nice brown. What do you think that was? A red African. Yeah, I like the horse. Same word is used for the red horseman, right? You ever seen the horse kind of like that same color, the brown, but it's a real, real nice bright brown, a red horse, right? You apply that and you look at T skin, you look at your skin. That's that same type of color that's to it. That's a color, right? And you look at it. Y'all ready? Right? And that's how we have to look at it. Uh, a lot of times we take these things and we come, with, we come to the Bible with something that we already want to believe. And then we stop looking for what the Bible saying and start looking for what can prove what I want to believe. Dangerous. Can't do that. Got to erase and we got to just look at what it say and study and look. If you look at what it say, you'd be good. Otherwise, these people will trap you up. I guarantee it's going to happen. It's going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind that it's going to happen. Eventually, no, they're not going to be able to ignore us. They're going to have to acknowledge that these people really believe they're Hebrews. Then they're going to have to address us. And when they address us, it's too easy. They're going to do what he just said. That's exactly what they're going to do. Oh, Esau the white man, huh? Y'all don't even know Hebrew. What's the Hebrew word that say he, he, he read? Oh, that's the same word for David. Exactly. It wasn't just used once. Grab uh, 1 Samuel 17. I think it's the next chapter. Yeah, 1 Samuel 17, 39. This is a proof. I'm going to prove to you that David was light-skinned. Everything is in this book. I'm going to prove to you that the man was light-skinned. It's 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he is saved to go. I mean, David just know he hard. He got his sword on his armor. He girded it. And then what happened? And he is saved to go. Uh-oh. For he had not proved it. He said, he said, I don't need this. I ain't never tested this thing out. I got this armor and I got this sword, but I ain't never used it in battle now. I don't know how I'm going to work with this. So he is saved to go. He said, you know what? Never mind. What happened? And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. He said, I never tested them, right? He said, I can't go with this, but I never. Somebody, I mean, you, it's time for you to go to the biggest battle of your life. You're going to take some untested equipment, some stuff you ain't never trained with? That's crazy. He said, nah, 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 I think I'm better off without it. Right? It's heavy. I ain't never ran with this stuff. He said, nah, I'm better off without it. So he threw it to the side. Tell me this don't sound like somebody that's like 100% down and with the business. Like, I don't want, the, I don't want these weapons. Because these ain't my weapons. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm used to how I'm fighting. I don't want to. He's 100% down with the business. You look at him and be like, oh, no, we don't want to mess with David. All right, let's see. Keep going. And David put them off him. Uh huh. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook you and put them in a shepherd's crazy. bag, a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. You know he's crazy. Instead of taking a sword and armor, he said, no, 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 I ain't never tested that. Go ahead and give me that staff. Another smooth stone there. Let me get that. Get five smooth stones. And then you want to go up against a giant. Like, you know, this man, don't you all mess with David. That man crazy. That's the only way you could look at him, right? Let's see. Let's keep going. And his sling was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And the Philistine, the Philistine came. Philistine is talking about his Goliath. This is a giant, right? This ain't no regular person. This is a big old man, right? Goliath calling people out. Before this, Goliath was walking back and forth calling people out. Send out your best warrior. I tell you what, you send out the best one you got. He get me, my whole army will bow down to you. Send out the best one. No, no, no. Y'all stay back. We good. I got this. Who you got? Just send anybody out here. Who you got? Goliath out there talking big mess. David, the only one to step out. Whole, whole army over there of Israel, including uh, Saul, right? And they looking at it like, man, they thinking about it. But David, the only one to step out. What y'all talking about? You talking about him? He talking against the most high God? Man, we with God. What y'all talking about? He said, man, let's do it. He got the story. He's like, oh, no. I don't know. This thing kind of heavy. I don't know if I can. I ain't never swung this sword before. Give me the staff. Let me see. Right, give me that. Let me get a couple of these smooth stones. Right? Get that put in the bag. Now he ready to go. Watch what Goliath say to him. And the Philistine came on and drew near I'm unto David. Y'all, he light skin. Watch this. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Uh-huh. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. He was but a youth? 
He was light-skinned, and that man was a pretty boy. You look at it, you look at it, I mean, I'm out here in the war. I don't care all this fancy stuff, how hard you think you, you light-skinned. Had David been dark-skinned and did that same stuff, Goliath might have been like, I don't know, y'all. <laughs> he might have backed off a little bit. You got a light-skinned pretty boy doing all this fancy stuff, putting swords down. Oh, please, I'm about to dust you off quick. He saw me, he's like, man, this boy light-skinned. I ain't about to, I ain't about, that's how you know he light-skinned. There's no way in the world David was going to, how you going to walk up to a giant, light-skinned, young, and pretty, and he, he's supposed to be scared and a, and when a, they come down to the war. And the giant was super dark because they from Ham. He a Philistine. He came out of Egypt. He looking like, man, this, this is not even competition. He said, I don't even feel right about doing this, this little light-skinned boy. <laughs> little light-skinned boy. Boy, you don't get out of here with your little light-skinned self. David whooped his darn butt, too. Slung that darn rock, hit him in the forehead. After that, he grabbed that sword, chopped the darn head off. That was it. We doubt the Hebrew looks light skinned. You know what I'm saying? Still, if he was dark skinned, he probably would have ended. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But you know, most of God know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? But you, you look at it, that proves it. He's light skinned. Ain't no other way to round it. Right? So we look back at Esau. Esau, one of two things. Esau has hair with that color, which is what the Bible seems to describe. It says that he was red all over. Um, he was like a hairy garment. It didn't say his skin was any color. So he's most likely our color, right? Esau. A lot of people think it's the Arabs and all that. Maybe, yeah, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But there was Arabs in the Bible that they called Arab. The word Arab is the same word that's used for uh, um, even or evening, right? Sunset, pretty much. You look at the sunset, it gives you a certain color. And that color matches Arab, right? It gives you like that, that brown skin color, right? Also, the sunset is mixed. That's what the word means, uh, Arab, in the Bible. It just means like a mixture. And that's what those people are. It's like a big mixture of a lot of different things, right? And even in the Bible, you had uh, Arabs. People identified as Arabs that fit that description. So Esau, even, you know, if Esau was that, he would have been called, they either would have been called Arabs back then, I mean called Esau back then, or Esau would have been called an Arab. You know what I mean? But today you have these people who are Arabs, just like the Bible calls people Arabs. And then you also have that people that they call Arabs that are dark just like us. That's what the, this is the this is the original people that they called Arabs, right? That we that we've now turned to call Arabs. They're dark, right? There's even today there's still dark Arabs over there too. They call them Arabs, and they're dark. They're not on TV, we don't hear anything because yep. the Arabs are racist. Yep. Don't let anybody fool you. Yep. Extremely racist. Yep. Anything too dark, not moving the way they want to move in their country. That's why this flea doctrine is crazy. They got them running all the way over there to Egypt just to experience the same type of racism or worse or different, maybe sometimes not necessarily worse, but just different, different type of racism than they experience here. And a lot of the people, you can look up these videos, some of the people went over there and saw it for themselves. Ain't getting no, you're, there's no escaping the curse, right? It's the curse, the only way to get out of the curse is for the most high God to lift it. And the only reason he gonna lift it because you obeying these laws, right? Because you obeying the most high God through the Messiah. That's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you're making a fool out of yourself. You're killing a whole bunch of time. All right? But you have, you have dark people just like us in that region of the world, right where Esau was. Edom was just below, just below its northern below side Judah. of Arabia. That's all, that's all Edom was, right? In this exact same area today, you have dark skinned people that they call Arabs, right? In that same region, right where Midian was and Ishmaelites were, were and Esau, Edom was, all that stuff, you have there. Esau. He became the nation Edom, right? Jacob became the nation Israel. Lot's sons became Ammon and uh, Moab, right? All these same people, right? We would make the assumption that the rest of them are black. Why with this one, we assume that he's white or he's Arab or something else. Maybe he is, right? Maybe he did come out with a different color. It's possible, right? He could have came out light-skinned, and maybe all his descendants became light-skinned. So that it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. But it's talking about the hair. I just like to believe it, man. They got the same, because he'll look just like us. 
He just, maybe they're more hairy, right? Or maybe they're not. Maybe he was the only one that hairy. He had kids just like his brother had kids, right? You don't really know. We look at these things, but we do know a dark-skinned people in that area. There's no reason that he has to be any, any different complexion than the average of us. He could, be, he, could, he could be anything, all right? So we just have to keep that in mind, right? When we're looking at these books and, and, and kind of looking at all these theories and everything, we don't need to, if we can't prove it, there's no reason for us to put ourselves out there. They call themselves and stuff. Came from Shem. Yeah, and he, I mean, you can look at it, and because what the the point they would say is, is is no, those people didn't really come from there. They came from Esau. But okay, let's just think about it. You had Greeks. You had Greeks in the Bible, right? Why didn't they call them Esau? Right? Why didn't they call him Esau? They, they were there. You had white people in the Bible. Why didn't they call him Esau then? Why all of a sudden we call him Esau now and they didn't call him then? They called him Greeks back then. They were Greeks. That come, Greeks is Javon. They come from Japheth. Right? So we look at these things and it's, it just has to make sense. We have to, we have to have more integrity in how we're looking at the Bible. We can't just go with something just because it sounds good or it, it solves our flesh problem that we have right now. We have to be able to look at it and say, uh, does this make sense or does this not? All right? But it's easier to just be like, you know what? I hate Esau. All right? I hate Esau is what I want to go with. You hate the man, well, that's, that's on you. All right? It's against our I mean, let's just give it to him, though, right? Even if you give it to him, you give it to him. You say, Esau is the white man. I give you that Hebrewism. Like, you right. Esau is the white man. <laughs> you still a darn sinner. Give me a Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 23. It's Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. You in a worse predicament. It's not... I told y'all, when we started off, what did I tell y'all the book was? Trap. It's a trap. This is how God has set you up, right? This is how he's going to set you up. Esau is not the white man, but I'm going to say he's the white man. That's a lie, right? But let's just give it to him. Let's pretend Esau is the white man, right? Watch how they get trapped this way. He ain't giving you no way out. It's Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. I got that. That got that, what you gonna what a whore me? Hate. That got that, what you gonna do? What are you gonna do at this point? Yeah, that's, that's law too. You know they don't come in. You probably read that out the New Testament. You get talking about loving brother too much, that gotta be New Testament. You can't be talking about, will you read that one for me one time? You this gotta be what what Paul say? You shall not abhor an Edomite for Listen to what is Peter talking about, y'all. This is uh what is this? Uh uh third Peter. It's 3 Peter chapter 8. No, this ain't. This is Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy. Uh-oh. This is law? I thought that was Peter. I thought this was James. I thought this was the second book of Jude. Ain't no second book of Jude. Right? <laughs> James ain't got a third epistle running around here nowhere? Mm -hmm. This got to be from James' third epistle. There, James ain't got no third epistle? All right, let's hear it. But it's Deuteronomy. It, this must have came from Moses. That's crazy that Moses talking about loving a brother. I ain't never heard nothing like that in the law. That's because these people don't know the law. This is Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. Got that. Keep you going. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, because you were a stranger in his land. These people will run their mouth and tight themselves right into a trap. Yeah, he the white man. Go ahead and go with it. What you going to do with it now? That's no white man. That's Esau. God hate Esau. I hate Esau. You know what they're going to say? This is how they're going to justify it. See, he's not our brother because God hate him, right? And if, if God hates something and you friends, God said, don't you be friends with the world, right? Don't you be friends with God's enemy. You know what I'm saying? You have to look and listen to their arguments. So, right, you know, this is where they're going to take you. If, if it's a smart Hebrew Israelite. If he's a smart one, he's going to take you to Kings, Second Chronicles. Uh, Kings too. We can do Kings. Kings what? I don't know Kings. I don't know. It was... Uh... Uh, was it uh, Jehoshaphat when he was talking about the exactly. Jehoshaphat? Yeah. Yeah. Second Chronicles, verse nineteen, chapter nineteen. He said, "Thou shalt not abhor the Edomite, for he is thy brother." 
that got that. What else you gonna do with that? The man just called him your brother. You gonna hate your brother? Go ahead and do it. Before we get that, give me John chapter four. This first John chapter four. The first epistle of John chapter four. We ain't gotta read the whole chapter. Give me about verse. Uh, give me about verse fourteen. It's the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 14. Then I want to I wanna go back and I want to get 2 Chronicles, chapter uh, 19, verse 1. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall confess that Yahushua is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. Okay. And we have known and believed the love that God has to, has to us. Uh -huh. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Uh -huh. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is as he is so are we in this world. Okay. There is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear. Okay. Because fear has torment. Okay. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Watch this. If any man say I love God and hate his brother he is a liar. I got For that. He that love not his brother whom he has seen how can he love God whom he has not seen? You hate Edomite. I mean, he the white man. Edomite is the white man. That's all right, y'all. Edomite is the white man. Don't let nobody tell you he ain't the white man. Okay, he the white man. You love, you, you, you hate Edomite? And you love God? Book said you a liar then. Book said you lying about something. What? What, what they gonna do with it? Law gonna tell you, and they love the law. You can't, you can't say nothing about their law. They love their law, thinking they know it and they don't. They love their law, right? It say, do not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. Right? You hate him anyway. Now, New Testament going to tell you, you hate your brother, and you say you love God, your butt lying. Give me First Chronicles 19. Let's talk about what they're going to say. Because they're going to come back with that, and they're going to be like, man, you ain't supposed to be loving on the God's enemies. If God say he hates something, you're supposed to hate it too. Let's see. All right? We want to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, where could they get that idea from? Do they have proof for that idea? Sure they do. First Chronicles, chapter 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to see him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? All right. Therefore is wrath upon you for before the, from before the Lord. All right. He messed around. He's so ungodly. You gonna love him? I mean, I know, I know it's your brother, but at the same time, God said, don't you love nobody that hate him? Don't be, I mean, friendship with the world now is enmity with God. You know that, right? So you look at him, it's like, oh, we in a conundrum now. God did say, I mean, it's a fact. God did say he hate Esau. How do we respond to this argument? Well, which is why we should not hate or the Well, if you look at the context of that prophecy where he said God shall love uh, uh, Jacob and hated Esau, Jacob in that context referred to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So then by extension, you would have to say that Esau referred to the Edomites. Because as part of the prophecy, the, the larger prophecy was about um, the Israelites. So, so that's what it was all about, was talking about the Israelites, and the Israelites were just talked about as Jacob. He just always refers to one person as it. So in that larger context, I think it's, uh, I almost want to get I just can't remember where it's at. I want to say Micah, maybe. I think it's like in Micah, I want to say it was. But, um, but in the larger context, technically he is talking about Jacob. So then by extension, you would have to assume that Esau is talking about the Edomites. No, 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 yeah. Doing this because I know how some other people have exactly, that's right. Then how is that not contradictory? How is it not contradictory, right? That's what we have to look at. We have to look at, because the, the presupposition is if God hate it, we got to hate it, right? We can't even mess around be help. We can't help the ungodly, right? So you look at it, how is that not contradictory? I'm going to throw some more contradiction up in there. Grab me a Hosea. 
uh, if you go straight back this way, it's going to be the first left. Um, and then you just kind of walk straight into the middle of the hallway, and that'll be the restroom. <laughs> just straight back left. <laughs> It's Hosea, give me chapter 9. It's Hosea chapter 9. Give me verse 11. Ooh. Man, watch what he say here. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth. Who is Ephraim? Israel. All right. We had 12 tribes. Guess what one of their names was? Ephraim. Ephraim. So it's talking about our tribe, right? Really, really, Ephraim represents the, the northern tribes of Israel. So Ephraim represents 10 tribes. But for the sake of argument, let's just say Ephraim only represents Ephraim, right? It only represents the tribe of Ephraim, right? So we're looking at it, and in this, he's saying, Ephraim, what? As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird. He said the glory of Ephraim, Israelites, these are Israelites, the glory of these Israelites will fly away like a bird. This is God talking right now. Let's hear about it. From the birth and from the womb, uh -huh. and from the conception. Uh huh. Though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them, that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. Right? He's talking about Israelites right now. He's saying, woe unto Ephraim when I depart from Ephraim. Let's see what else. Ephraim, as I saw Tyre, is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. He said, Ephraim going to have some kids just to be killed. He's talking about Israelites, y'all. This is Israelites that he's talking about. Keep going. Give them, O Lord. What will you, what will you give? Uh-huh. Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. Oh, man. All their wickedness is in Gilgal for them. All their wickedness is in Gilgal. Gilgal is in Israel, y'all. That's us. Gilgal, that's our land. He said, all their wicked wickedness is in Gilgal, and for their what? For there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of my house. He I hated who? I love them no more. All their princes are revolters. He hated who? He hated him. He hated Ephraim and Gilgal. That's Israelites. He said, I will love them no more. That's Israel. That's Jacob. Right? So now we look at it and we say, Esau, I hated. Jacob, I love. Is that set in stone? Or is that just based off of action? He said he hated uh, Israel too. That's Israel, right? So on one hand, he loved Jacob. On the other hand, he said, man, there I hated them. When they, when they was there, I hated them, right? And I loved them no more. I loved them a little bit less. I will love them no more. That's book. So what are we going to do now? So now we can't hate. We can't hate who God, I mean, we can't love who God hate now, Right? Edom is our brother. That's law. But we can hate him because God hate him. What about Israel then? Those are our brothers. God said he hate them. Are we good to hate them? Nah, they're not going to apply that same logic. Now, this is where you find, this is where you find your scapegoat for Edom. They don't say, whatever they come up for, for, for Israel, okay, apply that to Edom. Then. Right? Just ask them. I mean, start with this. You just ask them. Start to, God said, he hated Israel. I think I don't think we should be loving our brothers. I just think, no, nah, brother, no, 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 no. See, brother, you got to go here. See, the law say you got to love your brother. Oh, okay. What about Esau? The white man, Esau. You say you're the white man, right? What, what about Esau? Just catch him up. Whole book going to line up. It's a trap. That's how it's designed. It's designed to put you in a way where no matter what, you're going to bump your head unless you get it right. Right? Unless it comes out right, you're going to bump your head. It's going to be some contradiction. It's, gonna, it's not going to feel right. The book going to tell you nothing about hate who God hates. You'll never see that commandment. That's a presupposition. That's something that we thought. Right? Even when we read in, in Chronicles, I did that on purpose. I took you there. And, and it, you would think that you read um, God hates these people and you love, you help the ungodly. It didn't say that. 
He said, you help the ungodly. Are you going to help those who hate God? It didn't say nothing about who God hates. The decision had nothing to do with who God hates. It had to do with the, the activity of the people. Right? If these people are sinning against God, why are you helping them sin against God? Right? That's what we look at. Edom is our brother. So if he were white, you a sinner. What are you going to do with it? Right? If he was white, you a sinner. And it ain't no book to say he white. All book we got say he just like us. Right? So now you're a sinner again for saying he is white. <laughs> just go with the book. Why are we saying spend all the time? Now we just spent... 20 minutes trying to break down this doctrine. I, I, we could have been teaching something for real. Right? But we got to keep on going over all these silly things because all this stuff get mixed in. You think that's not on purpose? You think that's not on purpose? You don't think the devil, that's how the devil works? Try to create as much confusion as possible? Try to leak in all this ridiculous stuff? The earth is flat. I'm not saying I'm going to talk to you about the, the, the earth being flat. This is flat. Right? This is flat. We got mountains, don't we? So a mountain becomes this. Why in the world can I see every darn mountain when I look out my window? If the world is flat and you got something standing on top of it, why, do, why in the world can I see all the mountains? <laughs> Stop being stupid. <laughs> it's just silly stuff that we've been told. You ain't got to be no scientist to learn this stuff. You know what it is. You can look for yourself. Stop being silly. Well, see, you can look up and you see clouds are behind the sun. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. Book tell you, you ain't never seen nothing in the Bible to say something about space. That's a lie. Go look up what firmament means. He said water was above the firmament. Well, you get above the firmament and tell me what you find. You ain't going to get above it. You just go, I mean, just start jumping high enough until you get above the firmament. You don't even know what the firmament is. What are you going to say the firmament stop at? Where are you going to say it stop at? You ain't never seen the end of the firmament. You don't know what's on the other side of the firmament. I ain't saying believe everything these people done told you. I ain't saying believe they went to the moon. I ain't saying they believe they sent nothing up to Mars. I ain't saying nothing. I'm skeptical of all that stuff. Don't let these people confuse you into thinking that the world is flat when you ain't got no real evidence to say it. They just got you saying stupid stuff. You can prove it's flat, then prove it, but don't say no silly stuff. You can look out the window and the curvature of the earth is this, that, and other. If you can say, oh, please, I know what I see if it was flat. It's no reason for me to see horizon. Why would if it's the sun? Flat. Why would the sun go down if it's flat? Listen, you know this is mean? what they tell you the sun do. This is what the sun do. Look, and they mind this is what the sun do. Yeah, but you can still you should still be able to see it if it's flat though. Like, we're, no, the sun the sun obviously is gonna disappear. It's above. You will never not see the sun on a flat Earth. Right. The sun will always be in the sky unless you're trying to say the sun is going down here. Doing this. They got, they got theories for everything I'm saying. They got theories against what I'm saying. Don't, don't get me wrong. I didn't talk to these people. They got some, they got some slick stuff. They say for all this stuff. It just get tiring at their point after a while. I just be like, Man, they got an answer for every darn thing. I'm just trying to, you got an answer for it? We will do this another time. We will. We will. I'm trying to tell you. They got, they got, they got something for everything. I'm going to tell you right now, though. All that stuff. Silly. <laughs> All that stuff silly. We ain't even, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go back and forth with you for a little bit. We not we not gonna spend too much time. All this all that stuff silly. Like what what is it like? Let's say if it is or it isn't. Like how what? It don't what helps nothing. you to know. It's that. one of these. Like, it's just something that gets dropped in by who knows who, but gets dropped in to cause confusion. That's it. It's just stuff that gets dropped in to just cause confusion, and it can't. You can't prove it. You're not. You're not gonna be able to prove it. It's just. It's not provable. You're not gonna be able to prove it. And that. And that you notice. You notice. I didn't say that, right? You know that I didn't say it. I'm saying I'm not telling you nothing. I can't prove. I know what I can look at, though, right? I just know. I know what I look at, and I know based off of the theories that we look at. Yeah. Eh, right. You ain't gonna be able to prove what you're saying. Bro, they got satellites. You know what I'm saying? They look. Yeah, we don't know what they got. You ain't never been on them. <laughs> nice. Listen. Listen. I ain't no. I'm not a flat earther. I'm not even a round earther. I'm just, I'm just telling you what the Bible, I'm just talking about the Bible. I don't trust a satellite, a spaceship, uh, anything they say, right? That's why you can confuse me. You may, I get to talk, you might think I'm a flat earther. On the other hand, you might think, oh, I don't know, nah, he's just going with the government line. No, I don't trust none of it. I do trust the book, though. What I can prove with the book, that thing makes sense. What a lot of people say, they talk about foundations, right? 
the earth having foundations. We'll, we'll talk. We ain't even going to get into it. We'll talk. I'm going to let you know. All due respect, I'm going to bust your darn butt with this oh, book. With this book. Oh, oh man, I'm going to bust this oh, butt with this book. I want to see this. <laughs> right, after, right, after we, right after we get out of here, we, we, I want to see this. I can't wait. Grab, uh, grab where are we at? We just finished Hosea. Grab. Grab Genesis 7. Let me try to get back into what we were talking about. So this is Genesis, uh, Genesis 27, rather. All right? So we learned about, we took this long doggy walk to learn about Esau, learn about the two sons, all just to say, now you got two sons. Um, matter of fact, before we go to Genesis 27, go back to, where did we leave off in Genesis? We left Genesis 25? Yeah. Let's finish there. Because I'm going to read well, about the birth 19. Right? 19. No, go to Genesis 25, verse, uh, what verse did we leave off on Genesis 25? You got to read 25. Genesis, Genesis 25, 25. We're going to read a little bit more about Esau and Jacob. Because we, we really haven't even got to Jacob yet. So we don't have to cut this short. But And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. All right, so Esau meant red, all right? Jacob meant supplanter, all right? So that just means somebody who, you know what I'm saying, somebody who, who kind of took a place, you know what I'm saying, kind of took a position, you know what I'm saying? So he came out. He was the younger one, but he came out first, right? He was the, he was, he was the one. He came out. He technically was on his way to coming out second, and when Esau was coming out, grabbed him, and he came out instead, Right? So they named him Supplanter, right? You, you look at this Supplanter, right? Somebody who just kind of took a position. So keep going. It's important to know that because it, it kind of plays out throughout the life. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. All right, so Esau, he was out there, right? He was out there. He's a killer. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me get some of these animals. You know what I'm saying? He's a cunning hunter. He knew what he was doing, right? Jacob, oh, he's just a plain man. All right, he's just, he just in the house, you know what I'm saying? He ain't about nothing. He's a mama's boy. That's he what never the, come outside. That was, the, that was the book is trying to tell you. Jacob was a mama's boy. He's a plain boy. He's just plain. He's just in the house. He's just how that. I'll prove to you. I'll show you as a mama's boy. Watch it. And Isaac loved Esau. Isaac, who is Isaac? His father. That's daddy. Daddy loved a man. You know what I'm saying? You out there, you out there getting it? Well, go ahead and give me some venison, boy. You know what I'm saying? Go out there and get it. That's, that's my boy there. He out there hunting. You know what I'm saying? Esau coming out with his darn bow on. You know what I'm saying? Dirty and stuff. He out there, I brought dinner home. You know what I'm saying? Jacob sitting over there playing with toys and stuff. Like, hey, how you doing? Right? Mom taking care of him. Oh, are you hungry? You know what I'm saying? You got Jacob. That's how Jacob was. Jacob was a mama's boy. You know, Esau out there getting it. You know what I'm saying? Isaac was like, that's my boy. Esau, it don't say Isaac loved who? Isaac loved Esau. All right. What else? Because he did eat of his venison. He said, boy, you, bring, you brought me on some venison. <laughs> Boy, that's my boy there. Give me that venison. Right? Uh, baby, come cook up this venison real quick. Right? Let's see what else happened. Let's see who Rebecca loved. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Oh, that's her baby. Look at that. She loved Jacob. Jacob just sitting in the house. Just like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? He, just, he ain't come to his own yet. Watch this, though. Most I got, we're going to read through Jacob. Most I got made a man out of Jacob. But he was a mama's boy to start off. It's important to kind of know this. You kind of see he was a supplanter. He was somebody who always had the scam to kind of get where he wanted to go. Right? His mama. Oh, watch this. And I wanted to just wrap up after this. We're going to we gonna have to read some more. I'm going to have to show you all some stuff. Watch this. And Jacob sawed pottage. Uh -huh. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Mm -hmm. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Mm -hmm. Therefore was his name called Edom. Mm -hmm. And Jacob said, Sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Mm -hmm. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore to him, and sold his birthright unto Jacob. All right, so he gave Jacob his birthright. Because he was about to starve to death, right? He didn't have any food or he felt like he was about to starve to death. He was like, man, I don't care nothing about this birthright. So he gave it up. Very important. We're going to have to come back to this. Not today, but we're going to have to come back to this. Jump over to Genesis 27 now, and let's start at verse 1. We ain't going to read the whole chapter. We're just going to read enough. Watch this. 
I'm gonna show y'all this man was a mama boy. Y'all don't believe me. He's a mama boy. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son. He called son. who? Esau his eldest son. He called his boy, his hunting boy. We well, don't well, want to talk to Jacob for. I want to talk to Esau. Right, let's see. And said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now, therefore, take, I pray thee, your weapons, your quiver, and your bow. And I guess what, I, I mean, just see, let's, just, let's just wonder what East, uh, Isaac wanted. And go out into the field and take me some venison. Oh, give me that venison, boy. You know I like that venison. Go give me a little bit of venison. All right? Keep going. And make that's it, meat, by the way. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's meat like a, like a deer meat. Yeah. Keep going. And make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat, that mm -hmm. my soul may bless thee before I die. All right, so we told him. Go ahead and get that. Before I die, I feel it coming. I'm about to die. So before I die, I just want to put a blessing on you, right? They were superstitious. Or all our people originally were superstitious, but they not superstitious to fake stuff like 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 we become accustomed to now, astrology and all these, you know what I'm saying, horoscopes and all this weird stuff we do. I don't split poles and all this craziness, right? But they were superstitious for God, right? So you put blessings on people, they believed that these blessings would go. So God honored them, right? So he took it serious, like, man, let me, you know what I'm saying, before I die, I need to bless you, right? <laughs> so let's keep going. And Rebecca heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son. Rebecca Esau, heard this? Uh-oh. Mama heard it. What else? And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. So Esau out trying to get it. What else? And Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speaking unto Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat. And bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Right? So mom's heard it. And she is like, I heard what, what, what your father said to your brother. Let's see what she come up with. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I commanded you. Pay attention. She said, therefore, my son, obey my voice. So we got Esau. He go out there and he did the work. He out there, he out there working. He doing the stuff. Because who is he trying to please? His father. He's trying to please the father. Right? He's trying to like, man, look. Father, I want to please you. So he go out there and he do the work. He do everything he's supposed to do according to the commandment of his daddy. Right? Then you hear Rebecca. She hear what that commandment was. And she want her boy. Because she know he ain't loved by pops like that. But she want him to have a blessing. So she coming to him and she like, I heard, I heard what pop said. Let's see what happened. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to he that said, which I command you. She said, obey her voice. Right? She telling son to obey her. Right? Watch this. Go now to the flock. Mama's boy. Go now to the flock and fetch me from there two kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for your father, such as he loves. Mm -hmm. And you shall bring it to your father that he may eat, and that he may bless you before his death. Now, right off the bat, now we know that Pop's sight was dim, right? So he wasn't seeing well. He on his way out. You know what I'm saying? He probably ain't even all there all the way, right? So we look at it right off the bat. All right, she trying to take advantage of that. All right? Was this Jacob's idea? No. Oh, mom's idea. Watch this. And Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. He said, I'm a plain man of the house now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I shave. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I like to make sure I look nice, don't get dirty. You know what I'm saying? Esau a little rough. You know what I'm saying? He got hair all over him and stuff. I'm smooth. You know what I'm saying? What you, how am I supposed to get this past my dad? Let's see what she come up with. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and sh I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. He said, I'm going to mess around and get myself cursed if I go to the father the way I am. He ain't going to bless me. He's going to mess around and curse me if I go to the father. Watch this. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be your curse, my son. Mm. Only obey my voice and go fetch me then. Mm. She said, The curse be on she said, on me be thy curse. Right? Why would the curse fall on her? She told him to do it. She told him to do it. Let's keep. Remember all this. Keep going. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. Mm -hmm. So he went and got some meat. Mom cooked it up just like Pop liked it. She know it now. She know it Pop liked now. She cooked it up just like Pop liked it. What else happened? And Rebecca took goodly raiment for her eldest son, East. For of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Took some of, some of Esau's clothes, and then she put she dressed Jacob up in Esau clothes. 
What else happened? And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Then she wrapped the man in goat skin to make sure that he felt hairy just like Esau. Right? What else? And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? Mm -hmm. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done according to what you bade me. Mm -hmm. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat at my venison, and you, your soul may bless me. <laughs> Watch what Isaac said. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He said, It ain't been but 30 minutes. And How you get it cooking and all that so quickly? He's like, Man, that's a bad boy here. Watch it. And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Uh oh. He's and trying to sell it now. He knew his dad religion. He's like, Oh, this the, this the Lord's doing, Pop. Right? <laughs> He tried to sell it now. Let's see. Keep going. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether you be my son Esau or not. Isaac a little skeptical, right? I was like, man, come on close. Let me feel on you a little bit. And Jacob went, and Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. In his head, he's like, man, this sound like Jacob. Oh, this Esau by the hands, though. All right, watch what happened. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. You see how smart mom was? Mom, no, she knew her man. She was like, yeah, we can get him. Don't even worry about it. Watch this. And he said, are you my very son Esau? And he said, I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. Mm -hmm. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Mm -hmm. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord has blessed. And he blessed him. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. All right, so this is where Jacob gets blessed. He already had the birthright, and we'll come back to that again later. But this is where Jacob gets blessed by the Most High God through Isaac, through the trickery set up by mom. We look at all that. What does that tell us? Jacob had to be like Esau. Had to be like Whole mom. time we looking at Yahushua. Yeah, because the curse fell on Yahushua for us. Because we wasn't accepted by the Father. We look at, you go from the very beginning, right? You got the Father. He tells his beloved son what needs to be done. This is what pleases me. His son go out there and get it. That's what Yahushua did. He told him, man, go down there, man. You know how you keep the law from me. Yahushua went down there, kept that thing perfectly, and died for it. Right? Did everything that, that his father told him to do. Yahushua did it. Right? Then we creep in here somehow. And we say, you know what? You know what the book tells us to do? Put on Christ. Put on the Messiah. So we sitting here, and we taking Yahushua clothes. Yahushua, he put the skin, make sure we hairy like Yahushua. So when we go to the Father, guess who he see? Yahushua instead of us. Because if he see us, he ain't going to bless us. What's going to happen to us if he see us? Just bear. We ain't covered in his blood. What's going to happen to us? We're going to get kicked out. We're going right to hell. That's a curse. He going to curse us. But you know what we got on our side? We got the Holy Spirit. Spirit, tell us, obey me. Right? Listen to me. Right? He said, if the curse going to fall on me, y'all sure going to take the curse on him. It ain't going to be us, right? So what we do is we go and we obey, and we do exactly what he say, follow his guidance, and then we go to the Father, right? And the Father fell on him like, uh, I'm not sure. Uh. Ah, that's my boy. And we become heirs with y'all sure. That's book. Whole book testifies of y'all sure. Grab um, Colossians for me. We'll get up out of here. Give me Colossians 3 real quick. After Colossians, grab uh, Romans 13, then we'll get up out of here after that. This is Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Colossians 3, 10. Whole time we read about, you look at that, you're reading about Esau and Jacob. Right? Most high God revealed it to you. It's like, man, the whole time this talking about me. Now, ain't that what he told you? He said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. Talking about Yahushua. Whole book testify of Yahushua. We wasn't reading about Isaac. 
We was reading about Yahushua about to be sacrificed by Abraham. We wasn't reading about Abraham. We was, we was reading about Yah. We was talking about Yahushua, who has a wife who is also he's also a brother to, right? The congregation is his wife, and then also the book tells us that Yahushua is not afraid to call them brethren in the midst of the congregation. So the congregation is he's a brother to the congregation, and the congregation is his wife. That's Abraham. Abraham's wife. He said, he said in in public, say you my sister. But in reality, you my wife. Right? Whole time. We ain't reading about Abraham. We're not reading about Noah. We're not reading about, we're not reading about Esau. We whole time we're reading about Yahushua. I'm gonna show y'all Yahushua is Jacob too. Next week, not this week. Right? This Colossians chapter 3:10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek. You put on a new man. Keep going. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but the Messiah is all and in all. Uh huh. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, and mind, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. He tell you what to put on. Why? Why in the world would the book be telling us to put on stuff? I'm trying to tell you, he's talking about Esau. You will never, if you don't know the scripture, none of this stuff will mean anything. You're talking about put on, okay, well, put on, put on. No, it's talking about Esau. You go back because it, Paul knew Jacob had to put on Esau in order to be accepted by the father. That's why he's telling him, man, you got to put on, man, you, you got to put this stuff on. You got to make sure you got to sell it. You got to sell it. That thing got to be you, right? Give me Romans 13. Romans 13, 11. Rebecca said, obey me. He was like, man, I mess around and get cursed. Rebecca said, you know what? Curse be on me. You know what Yahushua said? Yahushua said, he said, the, uh, oh, what am I thinking of? What's the word? Not iniquities. The, uh, uh, oh, I can't think of it right now. He says some, it's not iniquities, it's a different word, but the iniquities of them who offend you fall on me. All right? I think it's in Isaiah, actually, where he said it. it might be Isaiah 53. All right? But that's what he's looking at. He gets cursed because of us. All right? We, he takes on the curse. By his stripes, we are healed. And by his stripes, we are healed. All right? That's because he took the punishment for us. It fell on him. All right? And that... This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe, when we believe. Mm -hmm. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. He said we got to cast off the works of darkness. And what we got to put on? And let us put on the armor of light. We got to put on the armor of light. Okay. Now you got to look like Yahushua. Keep going. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Mm -hmm. But put ye on the Lord Yahushua the Messiah and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I got that. You got to put on Yahushua the Messiah. I got that. Whole time we reading about Esau, he said the scripture testify him. It's important that we do this. Important that we look into the word and that we don't get too caught up and trying to see ourselves in it. We got to see Yahushua in it. Everything has to testify Yahushua. Right? Otherwise, we would never know. We would never know. When Paul, when Paul was talking about Adam and Eve, who, when we read Adam and Eve, who in the world looked at that and was like, oh, this is talking about Yahushua in the congregation. The two shall become one flesh. We ain't none of us look at that and be like, oh, yeah, this, this is a prophecy about the Messiah and his, his beloved wife. Right? But Paul revealed that and dropped that on us. It's like, man, that make a whole lot of sense. Same thing with everything in the book. Everything in the book testify Yahushua. We see Esau as a bad guy. They don't like that. Oh, Esau's a bad guy. No, he ain't a bad guy. He did what the father wanted. He did exactly what the father wanted. The book never said nothing about Esau doing nothing messed up. He did exactly what the father wanted, right? He got messed up after that, though. Right? After he got supplanted. Right after Jacob took his spot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And tried you gotta to mess him. up after that. But we'll cool. we'll talk about all that too. <laughs> now I'm gonna show y'all how, how Jacob becomes Yahushua at that point. Right? 
Any questions? All right, let's pray out.